Good morning. Oh, you know, as as I think about all the issues that so many of us, including myself, have had with the corporate governing governing bodies, I'm, my mind is always working to come up with remedies and always studying remedies that other people have used. And within the past week or so, I have come up with an idea of a remedy that I don't know that anyone else has used. Perhaps they have. I'm certainly not aware of all remedies that, that every person on the planet has used. But to me, this is a novel idea. And so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about contracting with the corporation. And my little blurb reads like this. Until the smoke clears in the time of quantum change, humans still have to deal with the governing corporations, agencies, and corporate entities acting in the capacity of de facto government institutions. As free men and women, we have the right and the power to contract with the corporation on our terms, at least in the United States where there is historical documentation acknowledging our sovereignty over the government. I propose an honorable remedy that may tip the scales. Truthfully, when I woke up this morning, I did not feel like this is what I wanted to do, but yesterday I spent numerous hours working on a document that is not yet complete and I am not going to share it until it's complete, but creating the foundation for contracting with the corporation. And when I say the corporation here, I'm specifically referring to those corporations that are acting as if they are authoritative governmental agencies, including the United States of America Incorporated and all of its subsidiaries, the various states, counties, and municipalities as well as subdivisions within each of those. All of them folks are corporations being operated for profit and they're operating as de facto color of law institutions claiming authority over the people. That's you and me. We are the people. And my attitude and the attitude of many in the sovereignty movement and the free man, free women movement, my attitude has been basically one of, of war. Fight them on their terms or fight them wherever you can fight them, but fight them anyway. The idea came to me why not establish a peace treaty with the corporation as at least the temporary remedy until legitimate governments that respond to the people and the will of the people are instituted or should I say reinstituted. We know that the Republic for the United States of America has been reseated, that there are governors in each of the 50 states and other officers, and of course officers at the federal level. This has already been done, and in fact there are more than one republic movements in the United States, each claiming to be the right one, and so there's not even complete clarity there. But one thing is clear, there does exist in the United States and in other countries as well a recognized government, albeit a corporate government. Now the corporate governments create contracts all the time because the Uniform Commercial Code under which the world is actually governed, it is the financial governance of the world, the Uniform Commercial Code operates in in all countries that I'm aware of. I'm not aware of any countries that it does not operate, although certainly some of the Islamic countries and perhaps others as well, but 
uh, many of the Islamic countries are resisting the UCC, the Uniform Commercial Code Governance, and wanting to set up their own banks rather than the banks that operate under the dictates of the Western Illuminati. Anyway, I'm tired of fighting the system as if they are my authority. I'm realizing, and I hope most of you, if not all of you, are also realizing that we are sovereigns. As the United States goes, the whole world will go. And in the recent United States Supreme Court decision of June 16, 2011, in the case of Bond versus the United States, the unanimous decision indicated that the framers of the Constitution concluded that allocation of powers between the national government and the states enhances freedom, first by protecting the integrity of the governments themselves, and second by protecting the people from all from whom all governmental powers are derived. That is an acknowledgement in writing, unanimous decision of the United States Supreme Court, that governmental powers are derived from us, we the people. I spoke on that back in July, and that video, the groundbreaking United States Supreme Court decision, I, don't, I think that's something like what the title is, has received more views than any of my other videos. The last time I checked it was what, 14 and a half thousand or something like that, and I haven't checked for a while. It's certainly not going forward as fast as it was in the first two weeks when I had 13,000 views in two weeks. 8,000 in the first week and five in the second week. Anyway, I'm working on the document, as I said, that hopefully will be groundbreaking as well, built on the authority and the structure and the re affirmation by the United States Supreme Court of the truth. The truth is governments derive their consent or their power to govern their authority from the consent of the governed. Now the way the government has been behaving is they they do their contracts. Their contracts are all implied contracts. When you apply for a driver's license, when you make the payment you are accepting the contract on their terms, which means you are giving up your rights and your authority to the state, to the corporation. That same thing is true of all sorts of things, including property taxes and any, any type of tax bills or whatever. When we consent by paying them, we are acknowledging that they are the authority, but the contract is entered into not by telling us it's a contract, they're withholding information, which automatically puts it on the level of fraud. And when they threaten you with punishments of various kinds, it is a contract by coercion. And contracts by coercion are invalid contracts. They are null and void. So all contracts created by government agencies are by definition, even within the Uniform Commercial Code, null and void. They have no force of power. They have, they have no authority except the authority of deception. And all of it is a deception. That's something that you need, each of us need, to get in our heads and firmly established in our minds so that we understand what we're dealing with. However, they are, for all intents and purposes, the governing bodies in our world. Until that changes, that is the truth. Why not make a peace treaty with them? That's what I'm 
attempting to do in creating the documents that I'm working on that I be actually began yesterday but the idea was was rolling around in my mind for a week prior to actually starting on it. It is my hope, my sincere desire, to live in peace with all of my brothers and sisters and the corporations that have stolen power from most of the people, not because they've they're especially smart, but they're smarter than most of the people who are mostly ignorant because we've given up our power. I gave up my power most of my life. I didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know. But now that I'm learning and now that many others are learning, we have the capability of shifting everything. There's many more of us than there are of those corporate entities running corporations. And remember, corporations are legal fictions. It is always based on a fraud and a deception. Always. And all contracts done by corporations are fraudulent contracts. Unless we create real contracts that are common law contracts telling the truth up front what the conditions are and the fact that it is a contract. That's what I'm doing. And yes, I will be sharing it on my website once it is complete and submitted to the court and to the other authority agencies. And I say authority agencies, I really should say governmental agencies because they are not my authority. They are only acting as if they are my authority and your authority. I'm looking at also my UCC-1 that I filed in April and May last year, 2010, and finding things that I had forgotten were even there, which is rather interesting. And I will be using those in my final brief in the appeal, uh, as well as in the documents that I'm creating that include the peace treaty with the corporation. That's all I'm going to say about that at this time because I'm really not prepared to reveal everything that I'm doing, only to give you a taste of where I'm headed. I'd like to invite those of you in the Central Florida area or who will be in the Central Florida area this coming Sunday, Labor Day weekend, to come to the New Way pod Pod means people of diversity for those that don't know. And hear me speak on awakening consciousness, the global phenomenon. I always get, or, or I often get to speak at the pod during holiday weekends when many of the members, the normal regular members, aren't there. So I'd really appreciate you coming out and hearing me as I talk about what's happening in the world and the global awakening that is going on on every nation, in every religion, all over the planet. We're still a minority, but we're a loud minority. And believe me, we're being heard. We're being heard in high places, higher places even than the fictional governments that have been instituted, the corporate governments, They're being heard in the heavens. They're being heard by, the, by our extraterrestrial brothers and sisters. And some people don't like to hear that because they think that's part of the Illuminati game plan as well. But I'm telling you, all the Illuminati game plans are being reversed. There's a reverse flow of energy happening on the earth in this awakening and it's going to come out really, really good. I leave you with these thoughts this morning. Thank you for listening. Namaste.